I've not drunk for what, over 10 years now, but I used to drink all the time when I, when I got depressed. I'd got to the point where seriously thinking about taking my own life, that was an option. In a survey of over 800 ex-professional athletes conducted by the Professional Players Federation, they found that one in two former athletes did not feel in control of their lives within two years of retirement. Anthony, the warrior, Farnell! During the height of his career, Anthony Farnell was boxing at world level in front of legions of fans. At age 25, he failed a brain scan and was forced into early retirement, but it was 10 fights prior that his real battle with depression began. My missus said to me, she thinks it was after my first loss against Sakalu that I changed. It was in the Velodrome, Manchester. And he's connected with the right uppercut. It was, I think I just, I got too wound up in myself, like thinking I could beat everybody and just walked into a shot and that was it. Anthony Farnell, we could be looking here at an early sensation. Farnell looks out of it, Takalu can finish it here. Big shots and the fight is going to be stopped in round one! But, but what it was is I was having ups and downs because I was still fighting. Then I'd have a fight, i win it and be on a high and forget about all the bad stuff. And, and then when I had to uh, retire fuller, um, it, just, it just hit me and it was... I won't, I won't wish it on my worst enemy. If you get in here, they will score the first try and they do to Paul Heighton. Paul Heighton played at the heights of rugby league, representing Wales in the 2000 Rugby League World Cup. I kind of set myself up for uh, retirement. Um, I decided to go back to university, study for a degree, um, and I set up a business. 18 months into retirement, he started experiencing feelings of depression. When I started struggling, started getting a loss of identity, loss of, uh, loss of structure, um, started questioning a lot of things about myself and uh, the environment that I was in, and that's when sort of like the, the negative thoughts and the, the patterns of behaviour started to kick in. In their depression, Arnie and Paul both struggled with addiction. I got like addicted to antidepressants and stuff, drinking all the time. I've not drunk for what, over 10 years now, but I used to drink all the time. I was trying to mask the way I was feeling and the way I was behaving uh, by self-medicating. At the time, I'd had quite a few injuries and I was, I was sent home on something called morphine sulfate, which just didn't agree with me and I went back to the doctors and um, their words were they will downgrade you to tramadol. Um, and what I should have stayed on for maybe two months, I think I stayed on for three years. Through family, sporting charities and psychiatrists, Arnie and Paul were able to win their fights against depression. Both have continued to work in their sport. I might be in 20 different corners a year. I'm with them, I'm with them every step of the way, so I still get that nerves, you know, the nervous feeling and the scaredness feeling. And that makes me, that, that gives me a buzz. I, I feel like I'm in the fight with them. I do a lot of um, presentations now for the, the rugby's charity side of it, which is Rugby League Cares, and we have a programme called Offload. Um, we go around communities, schools, colleges, businesses, prisons, um, and other professional sporting organisations, just spreading the word of mental health and giving them advice on how to, how to deal with it when, they, when it comes around.